Okay, today in this video we're going to look at this electronic component. It's very common and many of you will recognize it. Now some call it a variable resistor, some call it a rheostat, some call it a potentiometer or POT for short. Now they come in various resistance values and power ratings and they can be configured as a series resistor or as a voltage divider. Now they all have three terminals and you can get it in linear or log taper or audio taper now this one here is a, is a linear taper uh, potentiometer. Now this is a 10K pot, so the resistance values between the, the outer terminals will be 10K, independent uh, of the shaft position. Now the resistance from the center terminal to the outer right terminal will be 0 to 10K as you adjust the shaft. And also from the center terminal to the left outer terminal will be 0 to 10K. One will be 0 to 10K clockwise rotation of the shaft. And another one will be 0 to 10K counterclockwise rotation of the shaft. Okay, here are some examples of various types that are available. Now the first two you see there are PC board mount uh, pots. And they're multi-turn pots. Uh, the first one is side adjustable, as you can see here. And the second one is adjustable from the top. The next three are, are single turn pots. And they're also PC board mount pots. And all of these fit into breadboards very nicely for prototyping. And all these pots are available in all standard resistance values. Okay, here are some schematic symbols for a potentiometer. Now the first one you see there is just called a variable resistor. And it's a two terminal device. Uh, the second one is a series resistor or a rheostat. And it's also a, a two terminal device. And usually they tie the wiper to one of the outer terminals in case the wiper goes open you still have uh, uh, continuity through the total resistance. Now the third one is the voltage divider configuration that's probably the most common that you'll see on a potentiometer. Now on a fixed voltage divider using two resistors as we see here the formula for V out will be R1 divided by R1 plus R2 times V in. Now on a potentiometer it's basically the same except now that R1 plus R2 is going to be fixed because it's a 10k pot so uh, R1 plus R2 will be 10k so the, so the uh, formula will be V out equals R1 that's the resistance between the ground and the wiper divided by 10k because it's a 10k pot times V in. Okay the potentiometer that we see here is a human interface device which means a human has to actually physically turn the input shaft of this potentiometer to change the value of the resistance. So is, there, so is there any way a microcontroller can do that? Is there a way a microcontroller can control a three terminal potentiometer? Well there is and we're going to look at that in this video. We're going to look at this chip here. This 8 pin dip chip. It runs on 5 volts and it's actually a, a three terminal potentiometer that can be controlled by a microcontroller and we're going to use the Arduino Nano to control it. So next we'll look at the, the schematic for this uh, uh, for this chip, and then we'll uh, we'll fire it up and we'll we'll test it out. Okay, here's the schematic for the digital pot interface, and you can see here on the left the Arduino Nano, and it's powered by the USB port. You can see there. And I'm using the three GPIOs on the Nano. I'm using D8, D9, and D10, and that's the three wire interface that's going to feed uh, the digital potentiometer chip. And it's an X9C103 made by Zycor. It's a 5 volt chip and it's a 10K potentiometer, a 3 terminal. So it's getting its 5 volts from the nano, you can see there. And it goes up to pin 8, which powers the chip. And the 3, term, the three wire interface on the chip is pin 1, pin 2, and pin 7. Now if we look at pin 6, it's marked resistor low and pin 3 is resistor high and pin 5 is wiper. So inside that chip is 99 resistors and we can see them here. So pin 3 is resistor high and that's the top of the resistor bank and if we go through all the 99 resistors they go all in series all the way down to resistor low which is pin 6. Now pin 5 is the wiper which you see there. So every time we increment pin 1 it's called increment the wiper will move one terminal up on the resistor. So each time the clock is, is clocked, it will, it will move to the next resistor terminal and the next resistor terminal. 
So pin 2 is the direction. So if it's set for up, each time it's clocked, the wiper will move up. And if it's set for down, each time the pin 1 is clocked, the wiper will move down. And pin 7 is your chip select, which enables the chip uh, to function. So that's basically the schematic there. Uh, it's very simple. So next we'll, we'll power it up and I'll demonstrate how, how this works. Okay, this is my setup to demonstrate the digital pot control. And I had to bring out my old analog meter for this, as you can see here. Now on the clip that showed the nano and the digital pot chip on the breadboard, there was another IC on that breadboard, and that is a RC oscillator. Now that's only there for demonstration purposes, so it's an audio oscillator. Now the output of that audio oscillator is fed across the 99 resistors on the digital pot. So across the resistor high to resistor low. Now the wiper output of the digital pot is fed to this analog meter and to a speaker, so you can actually hear the audio tone. And I've mapped control to the keyboard on my, on my uh, computer, as you can see here. So when, we, when I press the up key, this up key here, it will move the wiper up one resistor at a time. And if I, if I press the down key, as you see here, it will move the wiper down one resistor at a time. Now the page up key will move the, the wiper ten resistors at a time. So it will jump ten resistors. And if I press page down, it will it'll move the wiper down 10 resistors. So this is like a course adjustment. Now if I hit the home button, it will move the wiper to the very top of the resistor array. So we'll have, we'll have full output. And if I hit the end button, it will put the wiper to the very bottom of the resistor array. And we'll have zero output. So I'll demonstrate that now. So you'll hear the tone of the oscillator. And you can actually see on the meter, that's the AC voltage output of the oscillator. So I'll start out with uh, the single step. So if I press the up key, you'll move the wiper up one resistor. You can see the meter moving there slowly because it's only one resistor at a time. So if I hold it down, I'll bring it back down. Okay, now I'll jump up uh, 10 resistors at a time. And now I'll go home, I'll put the wiper to the very top. And to the bottom, it'll be zero. Now when you power down the digital pot, you could configure it to save the settings of the wiper. So when you power it up the next time, it'll, it'll be restored to that same setting. Or you could have it set up to a, a preset value. So no matter what value you had it at when you powered it down, it'll power up with a preset value. And that's all on the data sheet. So if you look at, have a look at the data sheet, you can see how you can configure uh, the power on, power down uh, configuration of the digital pot.